Hi, welcome back. It's Data Analytics Ireland here again. Hope you all keep them well. So today we're going to talk about tuples. And specifically we're going to use the tuples to validate some data. So in the screen in front of you, we have a list of customer unique customer IDs names fictitious obviously and say some systems associated so say you're in a bank or a fund accounting organization or something and you want to have a list of people coming in in a data file but you want to check it against a predefined list that you have to make sure that what's going through is correct and accurate and there's no errors and that if there's anybody on it that shouldn't be on it um then you can stop that file and you can have a look so pretty pretty straightforward but um just to kind of give an overview to so give me a second uh, this video by the way i'm doing it in pycharm now i've just decided to try it out to see what it looks like uh, so far so good uh, a lot of good functionality in it a lot of um possibilities of interacting with other programming languages and databases so on and so forth so it's something I'll probably be using going forward and probably looking through its functionality to do with some other videos to kind of build out the video stock of Data Analytics Ireland. So we looked at the previous uh, Excel, so this file here, okay. So essentially this is say a payment file or a file coming in with all these IDs, names and systems. Systems are probably irrelevant, I just put them in anyway just to kind of have them there and what we're trying to do is say when this file has been read in based on the cust id uh, being a tuple if in the id field any of these file numbers are there which are unique accept it so what it's going to do is basically say if it's not in this tuple uh, don't accept it and basically uh, spit it out as a kind of an error uh, data frame so one of the things about tuples is um can't change them um once it's created okay so in within the logic um once this is created it's set in stone so you can't do anything with it you can't change it add it delete it whatever it's so it's a good way if you want to validate some data and basically have it as this like static list of um things to check against uh, which you know most likely won't change it's a good way of doing that um, so the other things the tuples they're obviously um, they're faster than lists so it's a good way if you have a large data set to check against using tuples is a better way to approach it um, but it really depends what you're trying to achieve and what um, what your outcome is so today then what we're going to do is just going to quickly go through this our output by the way will appear over here so it's actually already done so i'll go through these in a second but i just want to go down as we go through the logic i'll go through those so we're just going to file in do a file import here it's the same as we've done in previous videos so it's pretty straightforward and that's the actual that's the actual file that uh, i just showed you on the previous screen okay and then basically going to tell it to uh, assign a variable uh, to all the data that appears in raw in this particular file. Um, next thing we're going to do is basically create another variable which basically says this is all the values that's in data assign. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically say we're going to create another variable data load column. And what this line is essentially doing is it's basically taking the first row of the data frame data load values and getting the values the for the headers so basically if, if we didn't do this id name and system would be on this line here and this would be pushed down one so it would just look it looks wrong and when you come to do some of the logic further down it just wouldn't it wouldn't work properly so that's what this line is we're basically getting the header header row um header from the row of index zero so we can assign it in up here and that's all that this is doing okay so that is basically your data load column is basically 
lo load into this area with this data well it's a data frame um, called data load values and it's basically assigned on the columns and heading names to this value here okay that's all that's do. so the next line then is uh, essentially what we're doing is quite another variable and we're basically saying what's in the look at the id column which is this column here okay and basically say is the id if it's in if it's in this value this variable here which is up here assign it a boolean value of true if it's not in this here find assign it a value of false so essentially we're trying to look up all this column of data here against this list and then make two lists basically one that's value is true one's a value of the false so the output of this is as such so as you can see 1 to 15 is 1 to 15 here is in this tuple and it's essentially it's bring back a, a data frame table here basically over the 1 to 15 values and then essentially it's also bringing back one where there's a failure so it's basically saying 16 17 18 19 and 20. We can see they're not in there so essentially because they're not in there it's trying out the separate table so what this is essentially saying just to get back to what we're looking to achieve is that we are expecting 1 to 15 customers 1 to 15 but we also have customers 16 to 20. so what you would do in this instance is it's not in this code but there's obviously going to be um there's obviously going to be a check that you want to do um that you can see well you would probably go off and say a 16 17 18 19 and 20 are they um valid customers or should we just actually stop this file and check them further and don't allow it to go further any processing so a classic example this might be in this very simplistic form is is this files in you're paying some of these customers and 16 17 18 19 and 20 aren't on your database and you're essentially saying hold on they're not in their database don't recognize them we need to stop these and check these now they could have been added at one point just not updated but that's just a very very quick very simplistic way of looking at this I don't know it's a bit more involved than that okay so at this point um so we've done our checks to validate that 16 okay and we want to basically update the tuple so we did notice did say up here the tuples are immutable so they can't be changed out of remove any items so what you've got to do is essentially this cus id tuple you got to equal to itself okay so essentially we're creating a new tuple it's kind of open it's essentially what it's doing is overwriting this here and uh, this tuple value cus id and then we're adding it by here to and creating a tuple so of fail value id so essentially the values that appear here which would be this here okay i've been added to this here which is this up here to give us a new tuple okay so that's the way if you ever want to create a new a tuple or add to a tuple or update it you actually have to go and visually create a new one and um, that's the only way you can do it that's the nature of tuples okay so the final thing then what we want to do is we're basically going to rerun the logic up here and basically rerunning the logic up here um, will give us the new table because this tuple has been updated we won't get this split out that we got here okay we won't get that what we'll do is this new because this new tuple is in here when it reruns it will actually give you these two tables amalgamated and then this table will become blank so if we go down here so we're expecting 1 to 20 okay so this new table is 1 to 20 and then what you'll see is and that's the pass the fail uh, is basically blank empty so that basically means that the tuple is updated with the values of the fails after they've been checked so that's a very very quick way um, and introduction again of tuples how to use them to validate data um, I suppose the good good bits about that is you could use this purely in your logic where you only have specific and only specific values and those values will never never ever ever change that's where it comes and has its strengths um, 
it would be advisable obviously to check how you would like to handle that and I would say it's different organizations handle it differently and it's probably more e easier and better and more efficient ways to do this I just wanted to show a quick way today of two pulls into deduction do them more and how you can use them to validate obviously you could probably do the same process with lists as well so they're both very similar except duplets just can't be changed as I described up here okay so that's the video for today on tuples very simple introduction how to validate data I hope you've liked it um, please follow us on our YouTube channel Twitter Facebook we're also there um, appreciate any feedback in the video um, if you see anything else you'd like included or any questions so happy to um, happy to answer them they'll be in the blog post and we'll hope to see you soon take care bye